my name is Alan Murphy. Uh, I have no clinical background whatsoever, so I don't plan to impart any, uh, any meaningful knowledge to you this morning, but I would like to tell you a little bit about uh, who I am, uh, what's been going on for the last year or so, and what I hope uh, you might take out of this weekend and what you might do in the, in the near future. So, as you might detect from the accent, I'm not from around these parts. Uh, I, I'm from Ireland and I live in New York. Uh, I, I work a couple of blocks away at an investment firm. Um, I'm an avid watcher of rugby and golf, terrible player. I'm a husband, soon to be father. Uh, but what you are probably more interested in is I'm a stage four colorectal cancer patient. So my story is I was diagnosed in May of last year, uh, a, a couple of months after moving here actually, so that was a, a nice twist. Um, I was diagnosed at stage three with what was hopefully a benign nodule on my lung, which of course did not turn out to be so and was upgraded to stage four. Um, I went through surgery on my colon in January and surgery on my lung in February of this year. After a course of chemo and chemo radiation over the last uh, few months of 2017. So I think from, from the point at which I was diagnosed, I think I'd be termed a survivor or, or a fighter, which makes, it, like that, that sounds like an achievable thing, that sounds a little bit more glamorous perhaps than it is. Uh, I'd like to share a little bit about what that, that fight looks like. When, when, we, when we were diagnosed, my, my first reaction was, okay, that's, it's not ideal, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's doable. You know, there's, you can fight anything. You, you, you push through whatever the wall is in front of you. You, you kind of sum up your strength and you fight and you push and you do and you achieve. But it, it's not like that kind of fight. It's not like any fight you've had in, you know, in, in sports, in academia, in work, anything like that, where you just summon your resolve and you, you, you bash through it. It's, it's, it's a fight against your own lack of motivation, your inability to do things. It, the, the course of chemo sucks out what is your personality, what is who you are. And during that process, you need to just keep moving, which is an incredibly difficult thing to do, and perhaps more difficult than something more strenuous where you can put your thoughts to the side. It's a long marathon of, of effort, which makes it a little bit different to how, how this thing is painted. And I think as, as doctors and as clinicians and as research uh, people, you probably see sporadically how your patients are doing. I think it's important to remember that the time in between those weekly sessions, people are just struggling. Um, it's, you know, maybe that's not the most revolutionary point that cancer is hard, uh, but there's, uh, I think it's worth maybe having a little window into, into the challenges of that. But now, uh, sitting here today in April, I feel fine. I am kind of feel as good as I have in a year. I'm moving cautiously back towards some level of exercise and appropriate diet. Uh, you know, things are things are going well. We're expecting our, our first child in 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 October this year. But uh, yeah. <laughs> that required a lot less effort than the chemo, if, uh, but, <laughs> so maybe less deserving of applause. But uh, the, uh, the the problem with this is you you don't you don't wrap up the experience in a tidy little bow. This isn't the part of the the, the movie where the the music kicks in and everything's okay. You you know I now have my life back in three month chunks. I wait for a scan in a few weeks. If that goes okay, we wait for another scan in three months time. And that's the kind of runway that I experience now, which you know, which which isn't great. Um, but 
you know, I think too often you, you hear of people who, who've beaten the disease, who have got through it, who are out the other side, that's it, done. I don't think any of those people really believe they are through it and it's over forever. It, it's, a, it's a constant shadow that you need to, you know, put out of your mind, but it's always there. People never really get through this disease. It, it, it's, you know, it's your own body attacking yourself. You can't ever get away from that, particularly if you're genetically predisposed. Um, so if I could maybe just comment on a few of my uh, very basic uh, learnings on the subject. So, you know, Google's most reliable sources, which I take with a pinch of salt, inform me that my statistical uh, likelihood of getting through five years is quite, quite slim. I don't, uh, I have a problem with that, not for the obvious reason that that's not a good, good outcome for me, but the, uh, and not that I don't believe the statistical analysis, but that I don't believe that should be the case. Um, I think, I think they're, particularly I'm preaching to the choir here, people here are doing excellent work on this subject, but um, there, there is a, perhaps a tendency in the human condition to, to accept the status quo, to accept conventional wisdom, to accept in some cases the standard of care, uh, which doesn't need to be the case. There was a, there's a long, long history of the most intelligent doctors in the world being woefully, woefully wrong as to what the outcomes can be. I know, like, these are all obvious stories to you, but the, you know, the Hungarian doctor who thought we should wash our hands before surgery was, ended up in a mental asylum. Um, you know, now his face is on coins. Um, need I remind you that leeches were once a popular, uh, popular treatment. Like, there's, there's a, people have extreme recency bias. The, where we are now is the cutting edge of what's going on in the world, and therefore, you know, the people who were around 20 years ago, 40 years ago, this was, this was a different time. People didn't have the information we have today. If you think that you're at a unique point in time, you're fooling yourselves. This is a point in time at which you have an opportunity to, to change how this disease is treated. The fact that, like the drugs I'm on, how old are they? 20 years old? You know, there's, uh, I'm not saying they're not the best thing out there, but the, there is, there's so much low-hanging fruit out there in terms of achievement, in terms of increasing the odds for someone with this disease that, you know, we don't even know how I got it. We don't even know why I have it. Uh, and I don't think that's a reflection on the standard that's out there today. My, my uh, medical team is fantastic and have been a huge support throughout, but it just feels like there's so much achievement out there to get. If you consider the diseases we've eradicated in the past, I feel no particular reason why the people here can't be the ones to make those big steps. Um, so, I think to, just to, to maybe wrap up my convoluted uh, stream of consciousness, um, I think it's important to recognize that there are huge advances to be made. Um, it's likely the people to make those advances are, are sitting here, or at least have, have, have name tags here, and will be dropping in and out through the events. And do you know, focus on that, that it's, there's no reason you can't make a major advance. How, how often is there a publication out where there's someone in another cancer discipline that says, oh, I, I didn't realize that over-the-counter drug was, was effective. I, like, think of the recency of immunotherapy, think of the developments in screening, think of the, like the, some of the uh, statistics that were shown yesterday of you know, there's, oh, if, if you have, you know, an adenoma, your, your family's more likely to get the disease. That, that's, that seems like a very rational conclusion, but it seems early in, in, in what, we, what we should be thinking about. So I, I, I think we're moving in the right direction, but I'd just like to, not that you're not aware of it, but to remind you that there are huge steps to be made, and you're all the ones that are going to make them. So um, thank you in advance. <laughs> For, for your efforts and discoveries, and I hope you take a huge amount out of, out of, uh, out of these couple of days and, and share ideas and, and talk about what you might not be seeing in your locality, in your hospital, what's across the country, what's across the world, and, 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 and learn a few things and maybe impart some wisdom as well so that the standard of care increases kind of across the nation and across the world based on, on your knowledge and your work. So uh, thank you for attending, and I hope you all uh, have a great time.